Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. And a crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut.
everyone to the LEC live. For oh, we missed it. That's a bad start. Uh, live from the Riot Games Arena <laughs> in Berlin, Germany. It is the very first week of our summer season. And of course, the last chance for our teams to get into the season finals. That last chance spans across a bunch of weeks, though. There we have the Antonio as well, making his entry into the LEC for Giant X today. My name is Shox, and I'm joined at the desk by Goldberg and the person that had to make the exit for the Antonio to make his entry, Oruamne! Yay! I'm so happy to be here on the other side of the fence, where it's always a win, you know? Uh, not saying that we didn't win a lot with GX, you know, we got our fair share of, of wins, but... Did you? <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay. I, I, I remember the, the happy times, you know, yeah, so for me, we never lost the game, so I'm happy to be here anyway. Uh, well, we're really happy to welcome you as well, and Giant X is the first game, so we'll hear you talk about Giant X's new top laner as well. But first, let's zoom out a little bit. Of course, we came from MSI, and I just wanted to know from a gut feeling, how do you feel we should feel uh, after MSI? I mean, I think we're feeling we're feeling pretty tempered, but like towards the good side. I okay. think I think G2 showed some hope coming into MSI, where we got to see some new stints from them. Where are we just a one-team region? Yes, but how good is that one team then? <laughs> and they were able to take some games off top of top esports, take SKT to game five as well. So that was great. Fnatic, however, showed some good stuff, but also had a, a bit of a disaster ending. Yeah, you're a lot more positive with the G2 sentiment, but for me, I'm like. First uh, first BO5 loss against NA, I think, in uh, about nine or ten years. So Fnatic must not be happy about that. But knowing the guys over there, I think they're going to be coming back this split very, very hungry to watch that away and contend for uh, for the title against you. Good guys, Fnatic. Everyone was still thinking about that <laughs> best of three versus NRG. They were like, we can lose a best of five to NA. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> uh, but all jokes aside, when it comes to the end of the spring split going into the playoffs, Fnatic ended in first place. And they were, for me, definitely a team that showed the promise to perhaps contend with G2 finally, but it fell flat. Goldberg, who is going to contend with G2? I mean, if you look throughout the entire year, who's actually got a 100% win rate against G2, you gotta ha you gotta look at Rogue. You gotta take notes from Rogue because somehow, some way, they just have never lost. Well, never. They haven't lost to G2 this entire year. <laughs> so I mean, obviously, if you wanna if you wanna get some of those dubs, you gotta look at Rogue. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be really happy for that. Seeing Larsen and come back on top would be great. But I think for me, is it's very interesting because I think we have a lot of contenders against G2. We have BDS who have been leveling up, you know, consistently throughout the last year and a half now. MDK making finals. Fnatic having great regular season, you know, and decent showings against. G2. Too. So for me, it's more of a question of who's going to be consistent enough in the summer split to put all of those systems on point and, you know, not falter when it matters. And I also think it's a question of where G2 brings so much up to the region. Hopefully it's not uh, also a chance for other teams to really come into this environment and have no excuses, set a higher standard, see that G2 is able to do this being a team from Europe and seeing that these teams themselves also have the same capabilities and the same environment as G2 and can try and strive for the same results. That's fair, definitely with the eyes on Worlds. And speaking of Worlds and the season finals, of course, this is what we're working towards, that big end of the year here in the LEC for the big LEC trophy in Munich. Goldberg, how do you get there if you're not G2? I mean, if you're not G2, it's very simple. Finish top three in summer, you go to the season finals. And that's obviously in place, so recent performances of teams coming up, for example, like Carmen Combo Rogue or GX, if they suddenly start to become good now, the bad performance in winter won't really matter so that much. So you're telling me if Carmine Core gets third place in the in the in this season, in summer, they would still make it to season finals and could still make it to world? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, from the perspective of someone who who did do even the like worst version of the run yeah. last year with you know being tenth tenth into making finals to 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 make it uh, to season finals. It's a lot, I wouldn't say easier, but it, there is a lot less stress because right now you're not looking at it and be like, it's an impossible task because you're not like, you need to, to make finals. You just need to make, well, you know, <laughs> top three is just one, <laughs> one less best of just five Just make top three. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, okay, yeah, it, it sounds kind of stupid, but it is a bit easier, you know? So the stress level for all of these teams, I feel like it's a little bit lower and it feels a lot more achievable. I mean, they have a clear goal now and something, as you say, that is highly achievable. And when we talk about possible contenders for, um, you know, kicking G2 off that throne, maybe it could be Team Vitality. They are bringing in a new jungler and Karzi had some interesting words about him. It's crazy if Linka's going well, no. He's been trading every game. He's selling the games. He's a secret spy and he came to this team to f***ing win trade us. We are all gonna end up in LFL after this split.
Don't believe Kazi's lies. Linsys is actually a Gigasmith. My name is Aragon. I'm here to tell you why Linsys is actually going to be really good on Team Vitality. Now, when it comes to Linsys, what you need to know is he has several very positive traits that might make Vitality a better team. First of all, he's a brilliant shot caller, right? In every single early game, I've watched him for two years on different teams. And every early game, teams play really well around him. His teammates, his supports, his mid laners, his top laners, they always get priorities at the right time. They're really good at coordinating early set plays like invades onto respawn camps and what have you. And it's not a coincidence. This guy is a fantastic early game shot caller and that should be another avenue of attack that Vitality have this season. Next is the flex flexibility of his picks. He can play everything, right? He's more of a carry jungler with champions like Viego, but he has dabbled in Diana Yasuo, uh, Talia, which is really important in this meta, right? Because you have way more carry junglers that are AP, but he can play tanks as well, like the Rel of old. So flexibility as well. Lastly, he uses draft resources extremely well. He is a counter pick jungler, which is kind of rare when it comes to junglers. Usually you get early blind pick junglers, but when it comes to Linsus, a common position for him to be in, especially on KC Blue, his last team, was actually R5, and he'd find the best counter pick possible, which rounds up his team composition, and also is really good into the enemy team. So, in summary, to wrap it up, Linsus is a versatile early game shot caller, who can utilize draft resources well, and will act as a strong carry for Vitality this split. Let's send it over to Law, who is standing by with another new player in the league. It's the Antonio in the Mar Marriott Bonvoy pregame lobby. Thank you so much, Aragon. I have another rookie here uh, with me entering the LEC this summer, the Antonio, the LEC, I want to say. It's been one of the biggest memes uh, of the offseason. First off, congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to the league. I know that this has been something you've been looking forward to for your entire career, this drive to join the league. How much has it been pushing you? Uh, what do you mean pushing, pushing, pushing you to succeed, pushing you to oh, make yeah. it further, the fact that you wanted to join the league? Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, I compete for a long time, like eight, nine years, and this is was the last, I mean, the, when you compete, you want to be the best, so you have to play in the best league, and it's something like two years ago, it got, it got into my mind yeah. that I really wanted to be here, and uh, yeah, I got it. And it's amazing that you got it after all these years, especially tell me about the day you found out that you were going to be promoted into the main lineup and how you reacted to this. I mean, of course, I was so happy when they told me. And it was in a giant office in Malaga. Mm -hmm. They just t told me because uh, something like the... I was waiting because it was not 100% sure. I, I can't deny because I did try out. So I was waiting the, the new. And yeah, when they told me, I was really happy. I know that a lot of people were happy. I mean, this is a video that was made from the uh, League of Legends from Spain, yes, uh, the yes, Spanish yes. side. So many people have been cheering for you and supporting you and actually being so happy that you made it to the LEC. How does that make you feel? Uh, yeah, I, because yeah, I, I played for a long time, so so many people watched at me f since I was really a uh, kid. Mm -hmm. So they were so happy for me. Because apart from League, I did many things for the... Spanish community or whatever, so they were really happy and yeah, make me, uh, I'm so grateful because so many people um, talk to me and yeah. Must be looking forward to today. It's yeah. the big step actually, it's fine, uh, the final day. Well, how are you feeling right now? How has been the preparation getting into today, into the mindset and the fact that you're going to be on stage in a few minutes? I mean, I'm really confident uh, in me and my team. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy. Like, it's uh, crazy. I could not, like, sleep a, uh, a lot. I was uh, thinking a lot. And, yeah, uh, I'm really, really happy. All right. Uh, let's break the mood here a bit because you're a rookie. So, for me, I want to do a freshman initiation and remind you of, of the logs. Oh, yes. Of what? You posted before yeah. joining the league, and actually, yeah, Shox is. Here. Yeah, Th there nice. you go. In the middle. Do you want to talk about this? Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, okay. It's just a little joke, of course. Yeah. Um, this is evidence that uh, we have on X anyway. But we did want to welcome you also uh, to the LEC formally and maybe take a selfie with yeah. us, and that would be a good start. Does that work? Yes. All right. Yeah. Do you want to take it? I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. That's fine. But this was really cute, okay? It was I really was cute. I agree, I agree, I, I agree. 16. It was so cute. Like, you were 16 here? Yeah, 16. Oh I thought God. it was actually so cool because you fought so long to be in the LEC. Yeah. Uh, and now you're here, so I don't want to, like, only make go. it about this. The old one and the new. Exactly. Welcome to the LEC. Yeah. Okay. The Antonio, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Shox, I think we have you on the other side in a few minutes. I gotta so go. Over <laughs> to you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my god, I was running so much, but I'm back. Uh, <laughs> that was really quick, yeah. <laughs> so fast. No, but of course, all jokes. Um, uh, it's awesome to see someone who really has that want to be in the LEC and then arrives here as a rookie Odo who has so much legacy within their own org. Yeah, exactly. I don't think uh, it's every day you see someone who comes up, you know, as a rookie, especially in a major league, and he's the franchise player of that uh, of that team because he has been, you know, with Giant with Giant X, if I'm not mistaken, for around seven, eight years now, and he's been waiting this whole time to to get this opportunity. And yeah, I think it's a very interesting fact. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of English uh, viewers who's not going to know this Super League legend because that is what he is. He's immensely popular in the Super League fan base, streams a lot as well. He's a content creator, he's a pro player, he's been there for so long. So he brings a lot of expectations as well coming into it. But I also think at the same time, there's going to be a lot of question marks with this substitution coming in because it is a player that very much reminds me of Odo when I'm watching him play in terms of what I'm seeing from a champion pool and what he brings to a team. But it could also be a chance for GX to bring a new spirit and life into the, uh, into the comms and team in general. I guess that's the question mark. I know the sentiment that I heard uh, on Euphoria, which I do agree with before we see him play, is, is this an upgrade to Odo? I would say on first sight, not, right? But it is about everything around how you're going to be approaching these games and working with the team. Stylistically, Odo, how do you think he fits in to your role? Well, he's quite similar to me in that sense, especially in this meta where I think we might be seeing a lot of lane stops and whatnot. But yeah, I think he would fit in very, very well. Um, I'm just curious how the team walls around him because, uh, yeah, I feel like he's a little bit less uh, flexible uh -huh. than me in that sense, but he has shown in the Super League that he can play a lot of like picks that also myself I don't play, so he might be a wild factor for them. This is a great graphic, uh, of course. Oh, we lost it. Can we get <laughs> <Go> it back? <laughs> um, to kind of showcase kind of the identity of the champion pool that the Antonio, or the LEC, sorry, is bringing to the LEC. Yeah, I think it's at the only one missing is a uh, Chograph over there that's been caught up, sadly. And also only the... <laughs> Oh yeah, almost barely well, the getting in there thigh. as well. But he's got some unique champion picks as well that um, kind of signature, at least the Joker for me, is something that I've looked forward to that maybe in some spots it's something that he could bring out that you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. But it, from what he's bringing, mostly tanks, still can play carry, but pretty much the same, like not necessarily weak side king, but down that avenue. Yeah, the question is, is it going to matter a lot in terms of the top lane in the competitive state that we are in right now? He's going up against Heretics, of course, Odo. So how do you see that matchup playing out? And how important do you think top lane is going to be generally in the competitive games in the LEC? Um, I would say not so, not so impactful, sadly. Um, yeah, I would love it to be a little bit more impactful. <laughs> but yeah, I still don't know if we're going to be seeing lane swaps or not. But, at the, but usually what happens with top lane is that if there's a lane breaking or if top lane is the lane that is breaking, you feel it the most in the game. So it's hard for you to make to, to leave a big impact in the game. But if you're the one who doesn't have a big impact in the game, then you're kind of like, you know, a very clear weak link. Yeah, uh, even if it isn't like the carry meta top yeah, is always very, very important. Is it hard for you to talk about? No, no, no. Um, I mean, you know, I just saw the interview. I'm, I'm really, really happy that he's happy that he made yeah. it. Because, like, you know, I mean, if I was really sad, at least someone else is very happy yeah. that, he, that he took my job. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's interesting. But, yeah, I think he's very, very motivated to come into the league, especially for a team like Giant Tech that has been, like, you know, struggling. And they need to make, an, again, another deep push like they did last year. Having someone with uh, with such an uh, with such a tenacious vibe around him, like exactly with this tweet, he is. Uh, as you can see, he's extremely motivated to be here. It's a dream come true for him. And for a team that is struggling, this is the sort of energy that you need to push you over, where you motivate your teammates, you motivate the staff, the organization, and the fans, everyone to rally around you and make a and make a deep final push to you know lock the season finals, this is what they need. Yeah, and I mean, while initially it doesn't look like an upgrade, I don't think that you can fold it against him coming in with this much passion. Having tr tried and worked for this for so long, you got to respect the drive, you got to respect the passion, and the fact that he's stayed with Giants for this long, the fact that he's then being paid in return by the organizations, very nice. Yeah, it's great, and he will get his chance, as will many players, and as in the quote, everyone wants to make it to Worlds. That is what the summer in the LEC is all about. Let's kick off the summer season. For the fourth time in the organization's history, they will secure first seed in MSI, and they will lift the Spring Split Shield. The more you give into it, the more you will get out of it. So if you ask me what it means or how much you need to sacrifice to be the best, I would say everything. Back. Hey, you're signed, guys. Okay, GG, it's fine. Almost win. I messed up Lilia. We cannot go, we cannot go. I'm sorry. Alright, well, guys, sorry. Alright, that was okay. 
a lot. Ah, don't worry, we lose as a team. You want to feel like you deserve your job, that you're not here by a coincidence or anything like that. You are here for a reason. You have to go all in if you want to become the best at something. And even then, it might not be enough. I have learned a lot from those losses, though, and I will not repeat the same mistakes again. G2 is so far ahead because they have cups. <laughs> G2 just have to try to take it. It's a quadra for caps. They want to give him the same treatment. No, we're good. Apex in the Spring Finals. I don't think they are that far ahead. I never won LEC. Reached two finals, lost to G2 two times. I'm not sure what you need to sacrifice to be the best, because I've never been. At least for me, the best means actually winning it all, Worlds. Once I win, I can tell you. At 3-0 for G2! But I think that this split, there might be some challenge for them. He's got no escape method, trying to get the trade on data. He does! I played in Turkish League, I won it. I played in LCS, I won it. I'm really motivated to win and say I played in the Aero League, then I won it. I want to be the best, I don't compete to be the second. If I use my frustration to at least be more motivated, that can be fine. But if you use your frustration to just say it's impossible to win, then why are you competing? It would be weird of me to say, oh, I want to win Worlds. So at least for me, it's winning LAC right now. I want to get better to win. It's a good one, but the fight feels like it's already done. Nuke is Bob Ross. I can see the afro from here. We reach top three, barely every time getting top two. Next goal is to win, right? I think the sound split is best shot at winning the title. Guys are going to try and disengage, but he already used the arm. The flick back! Oh. It's still humanoid, baby! We don't care because we want to win. We will take these wins. We would also like to be challenged. We have to win this split, no matter what. If it's not summer, it will be season finals. But we are going for the win. Hello everyone and welcome to the games. LEC Summer Split kicks off here. I'm Medi, that's Vedi. You can't see him yet. Actually, you kind of can in the back of the camera angle that we had. The Giant X fans out in force as the Antonio makes his debut on the LEC stage. Bit of a Spanish against... derby to yeah. start off the split. A Heretics versus Giant X. Excited to see what they bring to the fold. While we have seen big changes on the side of Giant X, Heretics coming into the same roster. The adaptation, of course, bringing Zvira over Perks last split. Yeah. Started the regular season strong, but their playoffs ended quite shorter than I'm sure they wanted. Yeah, definitely. I think for Heretics, they built a foundation. And as Janko said, their expectation isn't to win Worlds. Their expectation, or their hope at least, is to win the LEC. And that starts here. Remember, the top three teams from summer will make it into our season finals. After that, it is championship points that we look at. And already, I am not surprised Captain Flowers crying somewhere because Skarna has been relegated to the bench. Lucian also taken away. I mean, we are playing on patch 14-11. A lot of changes have happened since you last saw us at MSI or at Spring Split. The question is, we heard some rumors around split pushing. The game team said, we're going to make that a lot harder for you to do. We'll see what the impact of that is. But so far, Twisted Fate, Senna, Lucian. Where will Varus, Caitlyn be on the priority list? Talia, we've been hearing rumblings about. A fantastic flex pick in the current meta. I'm just looking forward to the first support the build to Warmog's armor first. Oh my goodness. Warmog's armor, Fimble Winter, it is a busted build in solo queue. I've been hearing rumors that it's happening on in scrims at least as well. We'll see if it happens on the stage today. There's the rumble taken away. Where will Giant X go with their last ban? <laughs> Yankos looking behind him. Maybe towards the coach. Right, Maybe just to look at his own. I think he might be looking at the pictures behind them. <laughs> Of course, as a reminder, these drafts are pre-recorded. Yeah. So these players are just having a good time. They're getting ready for the game. I'll be honest. They're chilling. God, that's <laughs> like, that's <laughs> I thought I'd clarify for you, Medic. Yeah, thank you, Medic. Poppy going to be banned away by Giant X. <laughs> I wonder if this does mean we're looking at a potential Juhan Lee Sin. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. The two, Heretics, yeah. what will the priority be for them? The two changes for Giant X, obviously, on the top side of the map. Introducing Juhan with his DRX Maokai skin. Wonder if we will see the Maokai today. The Antonio coming up. Corky, first pick. Yeah, what a surprise. Woo! I mean, Corky has, of course, had some pretty significant changes. For those mm -hmm. that have been playing on the live patch, you're already very aware of them. But uh, AD champion now, but still played in the mid lane. 
Medic. They said that they tried really hard to put him bot. Pro said, nah, -uh, we're keeping him mid. <laughs> he can still be played in the bot lane a little bit. They got rid of his uh, passive package, which makes me very sad because I can no longer talk about a giant package happening in a fight. <laughs> Uh, but yes, Corky, Lethality, one of the builds. We also see a crit build coming up. We'll see which one happens today. There's the Sejuani, no real invention in the jungle. Giant X looking down towards Callista as well for Patrick. Obviously, Callista just so powerful, only uh, partly because it gives you lane pressure, but also partly because it enables your support to be that much more aggress aggressive. The Fates Call pulling you out of sticky situations. Will we see the Varus in response, or will we see something different towards the bot lane? Um, a number of AD carries were nerfed from 14.10 to 14.11 due to the itemization changes benefiting them more than others. Uh, but there's the Talia, as we kind of expected. Likely going to be in the jungle, unless heretics are really cooking in the draft. But uh, how will they round things out? You imagine that the AD carry is likely to be locked in here for heretics. They could, of course, go for their top side, give Wanda something safe blind, maybe like Cassante while Hasn't found a huge amount of success over in the LPL, still a very safe blind. Expecting to see more tanks in the top lane. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see something like a Gragas Cho'Gath match. <laughs> you know, one to go back to take that. Away already. Nordis locked in for Heretics, does work well with the Callista. And because the Corki can be flexed, even though, as you say, most likely going towards the mid lane, I don't mind this. I don't think you have to pick your AD here. Instead, get yourself one of the better supports on the patch. He can peel, he can disengage. I mean, we've been seeing over in the LPL, Ash AD carry. Yeah. We know Ash great into Callista. Caitlyn, we know can still be good. Jin, Varus. It feels like you can even go Draven if you want to. Yep. So, uh, Flackett, a very avid Draven player. Will we get to see it? Yes. Yone is the answer into Corki. Something in the LCL. LCL? <laughs> LCL? <laughs> that Chovy has been a big advocate of. A very safe laner, something that can get through the Corky laning phase and then in the later game is able to outscale. I'm very curious as to how the itemization go with the itemization changes. I haven't been keeping track of what Yone's do these days. Um, so I'm interested to see what direction we get from Jack. And of course, a slightly different matchup with Corky changes happening after Chovy was a proponent of the Yone no, into Corky matchup. So we'll, we'll have to keep our eyes on that mid lane. Jackie's versus Z Zviru. Uh, Giant X now looking for their second set of bans. Camille taken away, something that can lock down that Callista and even the Yone does make a lot of sense. Heretics likely looking just to maybe pinch the Antonio's pool a little bit. The expectation though is he goes onto a tank, so maybe you actually just ban out supports here, Benny. Does look like they're trying to. Uh, I mean, for Heretics, I think that yeah, banning away supports makes a lot of sense. Um, Oh, oh, okay, I was confused a second, but of course, Ash support still very prevalent in the current meta. Uh, so no changes. That, I mean, if you look at the drafts, you probably would be like, where are the changes from mm. Spring? And I'd be like, there are there are changes. Vi now, the next to be banned away. I was contemplating something like a Jace, but it looks like that they want to remove that single target lockdown, something we saw a lot of last split, uh, specifically into Callista because of her increased mobility. It is interesting to see the Vi banned away, though, with the Talia already locked in. Well, of they course, are. Talia can flex into mid, Corky can flex into exactly. bot, but it would be unexpected, I think, for that to be where heretics are going with this. Unless there's some tech about Vi top that we don't know about. Out. It's always possible. You never know what's been happening in scrims over the last few weeks. There's the Renata taking away. Heretics looking for a bit of a dive comp, and Renata obviously works very well into that. Well, one of the better supports on the patch, in my opinion, especially if you want to go very tanky with that Warmox build that has been making its rise to priority. And the fact you can yeet her in, she magnet storms, and then she can just jump herself out, or she can jump in, you take her out with the Fate's Call. It's a great combo. Very powerful combination, yeah. Very powerful level two as well. We talked about it. Cassante, even after many nerfs, many changes over the various patches. I believe on 14.11, they gave him a little bit of power back. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's still a safe blind. He's going to be thrown up towards the top side of the map. It did really amuse me, though, seeing people only see the buffs to Cassante while MSI was happening. Because obviously, he got really nerfed on like 14.9, I think it was. Right. And then everyone saw on Twitter, they were like, why are you buffing Cassante on 14.10? It makes no sense. He's so strong. It's like, guys, he's gutted. He was really weak. Obviously, he can still do his role in pro play. There's the Sin Sao oh. last. So it is going to be Corky AD carry to Leah mid. Sin Sao in the jungle with the Cassante top. Zach, the answer, something we did see a lot at MSI to that Cassante. I mean, look at this comp from Giant X. Very front to back. A little bit more dive thanks to the side of the Yone and the Rail. Like, you've got a lot of backline threat coming out 
of this Giant X roster into Talia, though. Talia's gonna find a lot of advantages. The Poppy ban also makes a lot of sense from Giant X, given the direction they've chosen to go for. Um, I think that their scaling, thanks to the Yone, is great. The question is, can this Yone actually get on top of these targets? You would imagine with the amount of dive on the side of Giant X, he would have ease of access, but we'll have to wait and see his Heretics going for a little bit more scaling, a little bit more poke and range, given that they've gone for the Corky and the Talia, but still very powerful team fighting in particular. Skirmishing seems to be the name of the game for Heretics. They're looking for a bit more of an early game lead thanks to their mid-jungle combo. And a big worry for Giant X is if the fight becomes very split, because you do have the Valkyrie away, you have Trimby who can stand on the front line, you've got Jankos who goes in with that Crescent Guard, and then if Zvairu and Flakert are given time with anyone diving on that back line, they will be able to shred through them. Talia and Corky, very high damage at the moment. And we'll have to wait and see exactly what goes down in the game. No lane swaps are expected. You can wake up. If you're having a nap, open your eyes, watch at least the first five minutes, and if Elaine's what happens, Betty will apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be fascinated to see how they make it work. But the fans are in full force. We're back for another split here in the LEC. It's Team Heretics versus Giant X. And on to Summoner's Rift we go once again. Both these teams struggled in spring. And to, to a, a certain extent in winter as well, we'll be looking to get those top three spots to get automatic qualification to the season finals. Obviously, you can still get in via those championship points. But for now, there are. There's a lot a of for grabs yeah. because G2's winning everything. Yes. Um, so, so, of course. Uh, you could, uh, there's a lot of s silver medals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As in, in terms of the season finals placement, uh, right? True. Because last year, we think back, it was. Mad and G2 that had already locked in those spots. Mm -hmm. And then like teams like SK were rewarded for their consistency throughout the year, right? They kind of finished in roughly the same place in every single split. Yes. With, um, and the advantage they had was that Fnatic, Heretics, and XL all had a massive upswing in summer, mm -hmm. which just really screwed everything up for everyone. <laughs> so um, I'm really excited to see how things play out this summer. As you rightly said, top three uh, at the end of summer will be able to qualify along with the, the championship. Players. And importantly, the, the winner of spring and winter, which is G2. So that's only one spot taken by them. Exactly. Likely to be top three. So we might have four spots, three spots open uh, coming out just from the championship points. And... <laughs> I mean, it's game one. It's fine. Go grab yourself a drink. Get yourself a Red Bull. Once we have a more mojito. info. A mojito? I don't know. I guess it's a Saturday a big afternoon. Big fan of a cider on a warm, sunny the Saturday afternoon. Is you know, very warm outside in Berlin. It's pretty hot inside as well. Is it? Well, I'm standing next to you. Oh my goodness! You need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you and your natural witty charm. Oh. Gasoline gun start for the Corky. Not too surprising. You can trade very aggressively on Corky if you take that Gatling gun first because you are just ripping through the enemy's armor. You just walk up to the walls well, you max and it press now, right? E. Yeah, you max it as well. Because they changed it. So now you basically stack faster. I think they reduced the number of total stacks from like eight to four, and it basically now just stacks so much faster. Um, and the armor shred is, uh, is felt yeah, for sure. Do you, do you, want, do you want to have a guess at what the issue is? Tell me about the issue. Do I want to guess? No, I want you to tell me. But I want you to guess. Okay, let me guess. It's a lighting issue. I don't know. <laughs> I was told it's an environmental issue. <laughs> now, it could be climate change. Yeah. <laughs> the ice caps are melting. <laughs> it could be an ice age, a little Neanderthal squirrel going to run across I, and try and fact, grab an acorn. I know acorn. it's a lights issue. Oh, <laughs> apparently it's a lights issue, okay? <laughs> but environmental sounds much more <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, ethereal. That's what they mean, yeah. right? Yeah, environmental issue. Something in the environment is affecting their ability to play. We're going to get yeah. it resolved Obviously. ASAP. And once we do, we'll be back in the game. It shouldn't take that long. Um, the pros are just having a bit of fun in the old chat right now. Yeah, they are. Uh, great to see everyone back on stage. Of course, I know a lot of fans are eager to see Jankos return. He hasn't had a great year for him. Uh, obviously, a highly pedigreed player in terms of his accomplishments and accolades, and with the addition of Viro to the roster. Uh, I mean, I guess it was received quite positively mm -hmm. because I think people looked 
at Perks' performance and were quite critical of him throughout the year. And to be fair, their regular season, they were tied at the top of the standings at 6-3, and three, but then when they got into playoffs, they lost their first round, won the next one, and then they ended up falling short. So um, what is super interesting, though, is that Heretics don't actually have a great track record against Giant X during the regular season. They mm. usually lose <laughs> to Giant X, but then in the playoffs, it's always a Heretics' favored matchup. Uh, so if... History is to repeat itself. Giant X are the favorites coming into today, but yep. that's purely based on the results of the past. I also saw Wadid, who is back in Berlin doing oh. some stuff with G2, uh, thought that Giant X were going to win. Really? So that's one person. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I, you make that sound like he's the only person. No, I'm just saying he's one person. I was just, you know, happy to have what did back in town as well. True. Always a joy to watch him uh, play on stage. The legend in the EU scene. Yeah. Um, right. Well, yeah. honestly, I didn't prepare as much film content as I thought. Well, I mean, we can go wherever you <laughs> want. To go, <laughs> We have some time here. Um, Halo Blades on Flackhead, I had a quick check. Nothing too surprising there. Most AD carries are taking the I Halo mean, Blades. You know, it's one of those things that kind of annoyed me because, mm. you know, I, after I'm aside, took my time off and I kind of disconnected from League as you sure. do, right? Make sure you have a healthy work-life balance. Yes. And then when I came also, back... Wait, wait, you played Lost Ark for I 12 hours a, a day. I played an yeah. excessive amount of Lost mm -hmm. Ark, yeah. Uh, but um, a lot of people are telling me, oh, huge patch, massive changes. It's going to be like, it's going to take you ages. So I jumped into a couple solo queue games. All the same champions. <laughs> None of the builds I played yes. changed. Mm -hmm. All of the builds that other people, like, it wasn't really that different. It was just Lilia was everywhere. Yes. Lilia was just making me miserable. Blackfire Torch is quite a strong item. Yes. Video. And so I saw, like, Karthus and, and Wei suddenly mm. became, like, really strong. Yeah. Didn't matter against my Akali, though. Um, because you were losing anyway. <laughs> no, because I'm one of the best Akalis, probably, on this side of the hemisphere. That makes sense. Um, don't look at my win rate this foot, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think um, if, if I were on the design team, I think Halo Blades would have been first on the chopping block. And that's probably... They did remove a lot of, of runes, They didn't did. They? they took out Lethal Tempo. But didn't they nerf it for ranged? Isn't it now? It's... Um, I, okay, I'm just going to remember these numbers in my head. It's like 0 0.88, and it's like 1.2 for melees or something. It's, I think it's 80... Yeah, you gain 110% attack speed for attack... Uh, for Melee's and 80% for range. So yeah, 0 0.8 and 1.1. Yeah, I think, that's what I remember. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So um, they did nerf it a little bit. Yeah, but I think one of the reasons, and this is as tangential as we can get while still talking about League of Legends, one of the reasons lane swaps really started happening was because I've been told to look at the prompter. I think Depp is trying to save us here, Betty. A damage light was causing a light leak onto players' desks, which was not identified during the ready checks. Oh. The issue is currently being resolved. So one of the lights broke and it meant that light was going into people's <laughs> eyes. That's what we're going for. And Literally. it looks like it has been resolved. So thankfully, you're all saved from my rant about Halo Blades and why lane swaps existed. Should be getting back on into the game in a moment. Woo! Yeah, a few people. Woo. Woo. Any Woo. wooers? Any wooers in chat? I think we're I think we in game. I can hear pings. Here we go. We're back, back on into the game. action. There we are, that's more of a, it was more of a way than a woo in the end, but a woo makes me sound like it's my, my first owner just coming out there for a second, buddy. Uh, so, so <laughs> you need to go for that. I need to speak. Yeah. All right, Medic, you take a minute. It's okay. It's not like we do this for a living or anything. You know, I recently found out that um, it's, I've now been casting this league for eight years. Wow. May 8th was the first day. Oh, congratulations. Back in 2016, yeah. Uh, still don't know how to talk about the game. <laughs> don't say that. Juhan, looking for... Oh, what is he? Oh, he's looking, looking to try and navigate his way past the vision to look for another gank onto Zvyro. If he can get his flash out, sets them nicely up for a level 6 play. Let's see if Juhan can make something happen here. So if there was a ward at the Razor Beaks, often placed by mid laners, that would have spotted him out. Juhan dodges away from it. Jackie's goes in. Zvyro able to walk away and will escape without burning any of his summoners. Hits him with a bit of mental damage, throwing up the thumbs up. But Jackie's and Juhan showing the potential strength of this uh, sejuani yone combo. The fact that Yone can assist in applying the passive procs makes it that much easier to set up for any potential plays. Doesn't quite work out this time around, though. There's a full clear being done by Yanko. It's going to take over to level four. It looks like that the bot wave also has push. I thought he would use that control to actually contest that bot crab, but it looks like, given that he knows exactly where Juhan is on the map right now, seeing that gank in mid, he's going to go for an early reset, spend some of that gold as quickly as he can to get back out on the map earlier. 
They can now try and hold the wave for as long as he can, but that is going to be denied. So a small CS advantage being gained for Flacken in the bot side as well. Overall, a very slow early game, kind of what we would expect for a start of split game. Yeah. We are also only four minutes in. I feel like it's it's very, very slow. longer so because slow. of the balls. <laughs> uh, Trying to be looking for that mid gank. Jackie's about half HP. Juhan coming across as well. That ward will now be spotted, as will Trimby. The eyes above his head show that he has been revealed. And with Ignar walking across, Trimby just retreats back to the safety of his own jungle. He's going to face check into Ignar here. Juhan can come across the wall. Jackie's dodges away from the seismic shelf as Jankos has worked his way down from the top side of the map. Jackie's low flashes. First blood heretics, and Ignar has to flash away as well. One of the big strengths of this Heretic's composition is their early skirmishing. Jackie's, Jackie's wave was in a bit of an awkward spot, and uh, Yankos finds that opportunity. He makes that early back work for himself. He does have to commit his flash, but he gets the summoner spell out from Jackie's and his team Heretic to find first blood. Notice Ignar also forced to use the flash as Trimby was looking for a hook down in the river, and that was a fight the Giant X definitely did not want to take. Overall, early, early lead in favor of Heretic's. Two flashes for two flashes in the end. Ignar obviously has that Hex Flash, so we'll have a little bit more versatility still in his toolkit, but a 500 gold lead for Heretics early on. It's a very good start for them. The question is, can they continue to extend that? Jackie's now has no summoners in the mid lane. If I'm Heretics, I am putting a bullseye on his back. I'm saying, let's gank this guy over and over again, especially if you can get him before he hits six, which is about four minions away. So it might be a little bit difficult to get that gank off ready. Observers highlighting for us that Juhan has just been spotted on that ward. Yankos is pathing very efficient right now. Not only does he make the gank in mid happen, but he's also able to get the top crab, move into his top side camp, start pathing back towards bot. He should be in a position to also cover for his bot laners, but we know the grubs have been a higher priority recently, right? Um, they're a very powerful tool thanks to the buff, the reduction as well from five down to four to be able to get that extra buff as well. Means that it's an objective that we saw at MSI. Uh, many teams prioritize over those early dragons, knowing that they can fight for the early dragons or the, the remaining dragons later on, especially if it's more of a scaling composition. Heretics have a great skirmishing comp, but want, they should try to leverage that, especially with the lead that they've already built up for themselves to try and force these fights around these neutrals. Let's see what they're able to do with it, though. Jankos going for another back, very close to level six already. Juhan, as he's out on the map, looking to gain some control with that vision. And the tunneler already picked up for Jankos. He's going to be pretty powerful already this early on. Dragon going to be started by Giant X. And you imagine that the cross map is going to come through. The Antonio moving from top lane, drops the ward down onto the grubs, expecting the cross map to come through. But overall, Giant X avoiding any early confrontation. Looks like it's a Trinity Force build for Flackett on this Corky, not going for the Opportunity Rush. We do often actually see the Trinity Force skipped over uh, and instead just, you know, IE, Lord Doms, sometimes even uh, the Flicker Blades on the Corky, but Flackett wanting... Corky is what I call an Ezreal champ. Yeah, he can just build anything. You really don't know on the day. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I think players will just decide in the moment, yeah. how much gold have I got? Oh, sure, that, that, uh, that will work, yeah. you know? Especially <laughs> since Halo Blade works with basically all of the item builds. Yeah, so, so I think that, like, um, there are probably optimizations that you can do. Well, let's look at this mid lane play as Giant X. Svaru caught up here, Ignar coming in as well. Juhan there, but a good seismic shove knocks them back. The flash forward, though. Zyru falling so low. Oh. Crescent Guard keeping him alive. Zyru able to escape. And wow. just at the right timing, Yankos arrives to keep his mid laner alive. The pot doing some serious work there for Zyro. Giant X with a nice gank setup. They had all the utility they could need, but they didn't quite have enough damage. Now Yankos on the prowl into the enemy jungle. A TP in as well from Zviro as he can join this, has that Weaver's Wall. Juhan forced away. Trimby in the mid lane trying to get the push, make it a little bit safer alongside Flacker. Jackie's goes forward with the Soul Unbound and we'll just bounce back to it. Yankos abandoning the red, knowing that he can just win out on the fight against Juhan. So he just focuses his attention onto the enemy champion with Wonder immediately on his heels. That means that they guarantee numbers advantage to secure this objective. And now he can convert that into the Raptors as well and start to create this gold discrepancy between the two junglers. Not going to be too dramatic for the time being. Only a small lead thanks to his early assist, but keeping his mid laner alive. Jankos off to a good start here in the summer season. It feels like Heretics can just get Pryo in the lanes when they want it at the moment. Jankos coming up towards the top side. Juhan will spot him. Finishes his recall. Obviously, the Antonio is safe on this Zac in the top lane, but Jankos unable to delay Juhan's back. 
And at the moment, nine minutes in, it's in. 700, 800 gold lead for Heretics, a Drake for Giant X in exchange for three grubs from Heretics. We look at objectives in terms of where these teams are likely to prioritize. Both going to be spawning in about two minutes' time. Eddie, Someone just missed a cannon. Have you looked at Ignar's first item? <laughs> He's building a Rylize first, right? I no, don't I'm think so. <laughs> I think it's a Warmox. Could very well be. And the reason Warmox is so good on supports is you can get it and it activates itself. So you get enough bonus health. Yes, I saw that. Because yeah. now it's from 750 to 1,000 yeah. now, right? So you get enough bonus health from the Warmogs and you know from runes and such that you can activate the Warmogs. And when it's activated, you also get 10% movement speed. So on someone like Rel, who is so reliant on getting in for the engages, getting a Warmog's first item just gives you so much more potential when you get towards fights. What so I'll also say is that as a support, you know, warding, roaming around mm. the map. It's very easy to just take damage. Yeah, you just get chunked to half HP, yeah. you walk away and you heal it back up. Yeah, and so I think that that extra bit of sustain just lets you stay on the map for longer because supports really don't have that many reasons to go back to base unless you're replenishing that vision. In any case, we see Juhan hovering around the bot side of the map, either looking for a play or just looking to cover. Noticing Talia actually went into the fog of war, should be spotted back in mid soon. Juhan is looking for a play here, but it's such a safe lane. Corky can farm from range. Oh, oh. engaging by Ignar. Great hook by Trimby. Pulled back with a Magnet Storm, but Trimby flash hooking his way out of there. Gets out with the dredge line. Burns Ignar's engage potential. Fate's call still available for Patrick. We talked about the safety of this bot lane, and you saw it right there. I did not think Trimby's hook was going to connect, but. He uh, understands the limits of his champion better than I do, and he's able to get away to safety. He does, of course, have to commit the flash to completely yeah. get away to safety, but Ignar committing his as well means that it's a pretty even trade at the bot side of the map. And Giant X unable to get on the board as of yet. Ten and a half minutes in. Flak is just going to be able to push out this lane. Drake up in 50 seconds, Grubs up in 20. You can see Trimby and Yankos both opening up through the mid lane. We'll see if they pass towards the north, I guess, the west of the map or towards the east of the map. I think it's going to be north. Six grubs, very powerful when you do have pressure in your lanes. At the moment, they are just waiting in the wings to see if Jackie's overextends. Patrick and Ignar have read the play. They've moved up towards the grubs as well. Remember, if Heretics can just get one of these, they get those mites spawning in, but all six would be a bonus. I mean, opportunity for Patrick means the Giant X should feel pretty strong. Trimby connects the hook but Jackie's going to get away to safety. Look at Juhan's position right now. A great flank opportunity. Wonder's still in base. Now TP's in. He's going to be in the midst of Giant X. Jankos with the Crescent Guard locked up immediately by Giant X. The Glacial Prism going down as well as Jankos is the first to fall. Fate's call. Cool. We'll pull out Ignar for the moment. Trimby's killed off Jackie's. Antonio needs to retreat. Giant X on the back foot. 4v4 now the play. Juhan can jump out of the back of this. Antonio still has that cell division. Dashes out, still stunned. Juhan flashes out the back of the wall. Heretics win out on the fight. It's a one-for-one -one trade, but they get the grubs. Juhan, maybe gonna try and steal one away with the smite. Have the Arctic he Assault tries, as well. He doesn't quite get it though. Yeah, he used the Arctic Assault to get away to Did safety. Did he smite a player? I think he smited a grub. Okay. But it didn't do very much damage. So maybe I'm wrong in that. When we get yeah. the replay, ultimately it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't, yeah. What does matter is the fact that Heretics walk away the victors in this skirmish. They turn their attention onto Yankos. They think that if they get rid of the jungler, get rid of that front line, Quickly, it can turn into a one team fight, but look at the positioning here of Jackie's. He gets CC'd by Wonder, brought into the wall. He doesn't get an opportunity to move. Great target selection there from Wonder. And once you remove one of the damage threats, there's only really Patrick left. And when he doesn't have that safety at the front line to play around, it becomes very easy for Team Heretics to chase the fight in their favor. Ends up being a one for one overall, but grabbing those grubs puts you. Well, actually, only put them to five. They didn't quite secure the sixth one. But uh, they should be able to get that now as they convert this into their second dragon of the game. Yeah, so it's going to be six grubs for two drakes, an exchange we've seen many times over the last few months. The Heretics, though, still out to this early lead, about 800 gold their advantage right now. Jankos, though, even though he did lose his life in that last fight, still pathing incredibly well, keeping up with the farm. His efficiency is very good, holds on to a pretty healthy lead with the Sundered Sky now secured. He's going to have a lot of damage at his disposal, and Heretic should be looking to skirmish a lot more in this mid game. They know the strength of their composition. They know how hard it spikes around now. Spyro could just complete that uh, Seraph's Embrace. They'll be in a really good spot. And I think if you're trying X, you just you take a back seat. You take a, a step back, you say, 
Heretics are stronger right now. They have, you know, Sundered Sky complete, Trinity Force on its way for Flacket as well. In terms of raw damage output, we can't compete with them. But we have a lot of displacement. We have a lot of CC if they look for things like tower dives, if they stake a step too far. So we'll just take a step back. We don't have to contest every wave. We can just get the wave under our tower, have Juhan shadow us down towards the bottom side or up towards the top side. And it becomes a lot more, hard, a lot more difficult for Heretics to take fights because Giant X have the Drake lead. So they don't have to worry about a soul. They have some scaling. I'm not saying they have the best scaling in the world, but Jackie's will likely outscale Zviru, and if you can put him in a side lane, he's very difficult to deal with. The Antonio, the same in fights, very, very difficult to kill. I have to see if Giant X are willing to take that step back, because so far, no tower has taken more than one plate worth of damage. I mean, I look at Heretic's composition, and it's not the tankiest. But I still think it's going to be difficult for Patrick to play out these fights. I yeah. think that Giant X's composition is relatively short-ranged into a Talia Corky. So I just kind of favor Heretic's composition in terms of the scaling as well. We'll see how the game develops, but that's kind of where my initial instincts are at. Zviro recognizes he's on the weak side, playing respect to that as Heretic's is trying to trade for the tower in the top lane. Right now, though, Giant X, they're not completely down and out by any means. As you mentioned, Jackie's in a side lane is probably going to be one of their biggest potential win conditions. There's the skirmishing power of a Sejuani and a Yone is also very potent. And this front line can be very devastating on the side of Giant X, just in terms of its durability and tankiness. In the extended fights, maybe there's ways in which they can turn this around. But I guess maybe I'm just a bit of a hater on Lethality Callista. No, I, I think we all hate Lethality Callista. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, you, you get a lot of damage if you can land big spears in fights, but it doesn't scale incredibly well. Uh, it just it gives you that flexibility with the face call. Antonio jumping in here. Oh, nice hook. Hook, as you say, from Trimby. You can get pulled back with a stretching strike, but the Antonio isn't really looking to do much more than just catch this wave. So the next dragon is going to be pretty important, mainly because Heretics definitely want to fight it, and Giant X want to keep that momentum going to put them at soul point. So farming and securing as many items as possible is going to be crucial. If they can unlock another tower, which is going to be difficult at this point in time, considering, well, it's very even across the map. Patrick, though, well on his way to his second, along with Flacket. I'm expecting that Infinity Edge second to come out from Flackhead, but uh, we'll have to wait. I would tell you what he's built in solo queue, but the only recent game I can find from Flackhead uh, on Corky in solo queue, they lost the game before he got to his second item. <laughs> so I'm sure he has won many games. I'm only looking at most recent ones. <laughs> uh, Attila, though, has gone Infinity Edge second, as you say. Uh, Flackhead has also tried without the Triforce build, so here. Switching things up just a little bit. The Rift Herald available to Heretics, though, likely to hold on to that for the next half a second. <laughs> so they then put it down to charge through this mid lane tower. The Might's helping them out a lot as well. I thought they were going to keep it until they needed it around the Dragon, but with so much power, with so much pressure in the mid lane, they could just use it and immediately take down that turret and get that and also gain control over this bot side river. Well, that's the crucial thing, because now you can just shift your pressure towards the bot side of the map. Antonio looking for a play. Jumps onto Yankos, TP in, let's bounce as Yankos is put in a bouncy castle. Weaver's Wall cut off Patrick, one the TP in, good seismic shovel, land on four, but already the Heretics jungler is down. Giant X, we go in with another elastic slingshot. They could, but they've side against it. One kill enough for them for now. So you can see how durable this front line is if they're able to play that front to back. They lock down Yankos, very similar to the previous team fight, and they absolutely melt him. Now Giant X are trying to respond, knowing that Team Heretics are forced to back. They're going to try and secure this tower and set themselves up for a nice track. The diving wonder, though, he dashes away with a path maker. TP in. Nice Viru. As he's going to rejoin the fray, the phosphorus bomb goes down. And Heretics, oh, good and tofu. Space call gets away from the seismic shove. Drake up in 15 seconds' time. Giant X still have control of the river. There's a couple of wards that will spot them out as they work their way down towards it. But they need to clear out this mid lane. Heretics have a much better push here. Because, of course, they've already taken that tier one. The Antonio looking for the flank will be spotted on that control ward. Yankos starting to clear it out. The Antonio taking his time, waiting for it. Blast cones into the pit. No vision on him now. No, uh, does have the Let's Bounce coming back off cooldown. Magnet Storm as well for Ignar. Oh, no fates call. That. I think it's back up now. Looks like it. But uh, great position for Giant yeah. X to be in. No vision gained on the Dragon. They can start that one off as the Antonio is going to tank that one up. Heretics need to force their way in. Trimby, still relatively healthy, but here we go. Ignor with the first sun. Stretching strike, Magnus, Storm lands on one, but the knockback from Wonder on the Antonio means he can't get into the backline already. He's in the cell division.
position. Giant X looked for the engage, but they were slapped down into their place by Heretics. Great disengage by Heretics, and then the fight was already won. Patrick trying to chase away here. The barrier not enough to save his life, and the Weaver's Wall will lock Jackie's on the wrong side of the rift. Heretics clean up the fight perfectly. A four for one in favor of Heretics. It starts with a great initiation from Giant X, but the damage just isn't there. They can't actually lock down this Corky long enough. Love the engage from Ignar as he connects onto two. But look at that interrupt yeah, as well yeah. onto the Antonio, interrupting his ability to follow up on that engage. And then Jackie's really, like, he just can't get involved in the fight. Patrick's damage is very limited as their front line just disappears. And you're seeing the strength of this Heretic's composition. Back into oh. the fray, though. Giant X coming back in for the fight. Trimbers already down. Giant X will get the Drake. Heretics, I think, underinvested in making sure they could secure it. Giant X burnt the TP from the Antonio to get back into the battle. Well, Yangos was dead, so they didn't have Smite, yep. which meant that their actual ability to take the Dragon was too slow. Now Giant X put themselves at soul point. And sometimes it's those small mo moments of fortune that can turn the tide in games like this. Heretics have been on the front foot for the majority of the matchup. But now it's only a 1.5k gold difference, and you're starting to see second items on their way for Giant X. If they can get an Infernal Soul as well, with the Antonio diving on their back line, with Jackie's there, it can be tricky for Heretics to play the game. Map resets, the gold difference not that significant, but Giant X give themselves a very clear win condition. Positioning right now. It's a game that could go either way, but we've been seeing Heretics come out ahead in these team fights, and I think a big reason for that is just it's so hard for Patrick and Jackie to really play the fights. We already talked about the range, but things like Talia's... Um, why have I can, forgotten the word? The thing that puts Earth. rocks on the ground. Unraveled yeah. Earth. Unraveled Earth. It, uh, it makes it so difficult for champions like Callista and Yone to really get involved in the fight, especially mm. if it's just they're in the thick of things, right? So the front line goes in, and the follow-up needs to be there, specifically from Jackie's with that ultimate. But to their credit, Wanda and Yankos in these fights have been instrumental in locking Jackie's down when he is in melee range or using the ultimate from Yankos to interrupt the engage from the Antonio. They're making it very difficult for Giant X to actually use their engage yeah. to, uh, to find those good fights. Heretic's been very good at watching for that long-range engage. Wonder here by his lonesome for now. Trippy's on his way up towards the top lane. Still only two towers to Heretic, so one to Giant X. Feels like a, a fight could begin to see those towers falling to the ground, but it's hard to find a fight, especially when, at the moment, it's just about Baron Vision, right? You're just setting up, trying to control this area. Ignar's got a few wards down. Heretics will try and sweep them out, but don't have a sweeper available right now. And look at how tanky Trimby is. Of course, uh, on a lot of items, they reduce the amount of health, mm. but 75 armor from the Randuin's Omen, the critical strike damage against the Yone as well, and then just the slow as yep. an application against Kalista. It's such a great item against exactly uh, what Giants have drafted for themselves. So Trimby going to be a very effective front line here on this Nautilus as well. The question is, will he be dealing with Jackies, right? Can Giant X enact? Uh, a split push on the Yone. I mean, as long as he stays within range of Flacket, it just makes yeah. it that much harder for Jackies to be a threat. Mm -hmm. It kind of means that Jack Giant X have to play this front to back, and I'm not optimistic about their ability to really get through this front line, given that Trimby now has this item completed, and look at how tanky Wanda already is. 100% agree with you there, Betty. As Viru already got the Leandries and the Seraphs upgraded to that Archangels, so... Sometimes, you know when a name just clicks for you? You know, like you have that moment of realization and you're like, oh, well, obviously, Archangels upgrades into Seraphs. Because you have an Archangel and then above them in the pecking order of, you know, heaven is a ser Seraphim. Okay. So obviously it does. It's like the sure. Mana Mune Mura Mana thing. Sure. Right? Well, mine's It literally Mana just clicked for me. More of uh, Mana. Yeah, more of Mana, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, oh, it just clicked now. It literally just this moment clicked for me. Oh. Yeah. So you're saying that this naming convention wasn't random. There's actually a lot of philosophy and thought. I, I think there's quite a lot of logic. The only thing I think there was no logic to was Supreme Display of Talent <laughs> as Kiana's ultimate name. Also, explain that other item, the Energized one, the Cyclo Sword. Oh, Voltaic Cyclo Sword? <laughs> yeah, explain. I actually quite name it, like, like the name. Do you? Yeah, because you cycle through these electrical shocks, right? So it's Voltaic. It's, you're cycling because you, you have to build it up. It's like kinetic energy. I'm not sold on that one. Okay. Nope. That's allowed. 
You might wonder why we're babbling a little bit. Well, it's because there's no Drake for a minute, and no one's really going to take the Baron without winning a fight. So. But, I mean, Janex do have pretty good setup right now. They're getting deep vision on the bot side of the map. They've pushed in that bot wave as well, it's leveraging some of the strengths of Jackie's as a side laner. And Finn in the Edge finish for him. Uh, Infinity Edge finished for him, rather. Mm -hmm. Means that he's going to be in a much stronger spot. The fight over the mid wave continues as the TP now invested. Here we go. The Dragon Fight going to be an important one. Jackie's jumping in. Dash is back with the Soul Unbound. The Antonio, I think, is going to go down towards that bottom lane to match that wave that's pushing in. Or might even just TP behind here. Oh, here Won't we be go. spotted. Ward comes in behind. Survivor has to flash away from the Glacial Prison. The Antonio trying to work his way around. On his LEC debut, can he find the engage? He's not on vision. Heretics know something's up, but do they know? The Antonio's on his way in, immediately locked up with the death charge. Blacken has to flash away. The Antonio flashes out as well. Jankos goes in with the Crescent Guard and knocks back two. Juhan, the first of four. And the Antonio short to follow Weaver's wall forward. Giant X sprung the trap, but Heretics were ready and waiting. Jackie's trying to do everything he can, but he just can't do enough. Patrick finds one on the backside, so it's a Three for two so far, but the important thing for Heretics is they kill the enemy jungler and they get control over this dragon. A great team fight for Heretics that, uh, honestly, I, I think they overstepped their bounds at the end there. You can see this initiation from Giant X, great response from Trimby. And then look at this knockback from Spyro into this play from Jankos, keeping them underneath the tower and splitting up Giant X. The dive just isn't working out the way that Giant X would like it to. Jackie's doing a great job at the very least of getting something back on the other end. But as Vyra oversteps his bounds, thinks that he can get this kill. Support Ignar comes in to save the day, keep his AD carry alive. And uh, both the carries on the side of Heretics actually end up losing their life. But overall, still one team fight for Heretics. And as you said, Dragon secured. Stop that soul from being taken. And as you said, Betty, you mentioned a few times during this game, perhaps a sign of things to come for Giant X can't be a full 5v5, even with the flank. Heretics have been so good at reacting, making sure the Antonio doesn't get that initial knockup. They have the Death Charge follow-up, they have Zvyro with the Seismic Shard, they've got Crescent Guard as well for that mini knockback. I mean, the most impressive thing to me is, is Heretics team fighting so far. They've been playing every single fight incredibly well. It's like they know exactly how they want to execute upon it, and each individual member really contributing in the way that they need to. Trimby providing the... Uh, utility onto the right targets, Yankos being able to find these great ways of interrupting and creating chaos in the team fight for Giant X, Wonder with good target selection, and then Spyro and Flackard with uh, good positioning and damage. Spyro now multiple times hitting multi man knockbacks. Yep. Just a great team fighting from them. It should be enough to, to honestly take them this first game, but we've seen throws before. And it's still only a 3,000 gold lead, right? Like, we're still looking at a two items. Baron, the yeah. soul could swing the whole game, so. Heretics can't rest on their laurels just yet. Things are going well for them, but they still need to close things out. Rockets coming through from Flacken. Chipping away as Yankos. They're just fighting for space right now, looking to try and control the river. Giant X, do you have this one ward littered? Well, it's very close to that mid lane tower. You can see it on the minimap as a potential flank option. Jackie's does have the TP. But uh, Heretics trying to shepherd Giant X into their half of the jungle. And the issue with Giant X is you, you don't have poke damage, right? You have uh, two, uh, three item lethality Callista who maybe can hit a spear. But on the other side, you've got Zyro chucking out those threaded volleys. You've got the missiles from Flackhead. At least they have a little bit of poke to chip you down. Now, obviously, you have a couple of Warmogs. So if Ignar and Juana are the people tanking up that poke, then it's fine. You don't really have a way of answering that without just going all in for the engage. The division cleared out by them. Drake's still two and a half minutes away, but it is looking increasingly more dire for Giant X. Thing is, I will say that Heretics, in the mid game, they seem a little, well, I don't want to say lost on the map, but uh, I think that with the lead they have, they could force a little bit more if they wanted to. I guess they're hesitant, and they're kind of reacting to the plays that Giant X make, because is he going to get spotted? I think he gets out. Arctic Soul? I don't think he does. Oh, he doesn't. The smite comes down just in time. Puts the ward down for a potential TP. Not being no. used yet. See, Antonio's there. Zyro now has no flash. Exchange for the Glacial Prison. Juan's done a really good job of working around vision. We saw it on the level three gank towards mid here. He dodges over the Dragon Pit to go through Tribush, which wasn't warded. Now Zyro doesn't have a flash for the next fight. 
could be huge considering the dive on the side of Giant X. See if they can make things work out in their favor. TP is now available for Giant X as all of their wards have ran out. Really good control from Heretics around the Baron. The question is, are they actually going to force this objective? I feel like they could, if nothing else, to get the TPs out from their opposition. The vision has been completely denied. I don't think their Baron is very slow, so by all means, here we are. Starting the objective off. Let's see how Giant X respond. Starting it as well with Flacket in the mid lane. A bit of a diversion, a distraction. Everyone goes in, puts the control ward down, 8,000 on it. No TP burnt as of yet. The Antonio is working his way up through mid lane. Jiren's going to dodge away here. Trimby flash up, flash away. Needed there by Jiren. I think he would have just been shoved back and, back and taken out by Heretics if he'd stayed a moment longer. The Antonio, or just the last section, slingshot his way to safety. Heretics hesitant to throw the lead that they've been able to build. But the Dragon now 45 seconds away. They have all this control on the top side, but now they need to move it towards the bot side of the map. Still a plethora of wards available for Trimby. It's a good word. Plethora. It's nice, right? Um, but you look at how many control wards there are on the other side. Like Giant X, everyone but Patrick has picked up a control ward to true. try and uh, deal with some of the vision control. They were able to get the push in bot two from Wonder. He now regroups with the team in mid to help push out that wave. Now right. they'll use this control to move into the bot side. Yeah, because needs to be careful. I mean, the problem for Heretics now as well is you can play for the Baron, but if you do, Drake is up. So Giant X can play for the Drake. There is a Weaver's Wall coming in here as Ignar was spotted. He jumps away. Seismic Shove's going to lock him up. Giant X trying to react to this. Ignar gets onto the Blast Cone. Trimby with the lock up. Fate's Call pulls him out. Ignar able to get away. Last next thing shot across. On the top side, Juhan caught out, pulled up with the wall out as well as the Antonio knocked back with the seismic shove. He's going to go into the cell division. Juhan will fall as Wonder and Yankos get one. Patrick falling low as well. The Magnus Storm coming in. Jackie's dash is back. Face sealed onto the back line though. Jackie's almost kills off Flacco but can't quite do it. The barrier not enough for him as he's taken out in the end. And it was a very messy fight, but Heretics come out of it without losing a man and taking down four from Giant X. A sweep of a fight in favor of Team Heretics. Trimby is hunting for the kill. I don't think he's going to be able to find it. They're going to secure the tower and mid the dragon as well. Giant X didn't find the fight at all. They were scattered. It was Heretics forcing a pick onto Ignard. The ultimate comes out early from Patrick. Juhan then gets engaged on in mid lane. Antonio is trying to dive onto the back line. Look at this. Look at how split the fight is here. What does Jackie and Patrick do? They try to turn their attention onto the tanks. Patrick gets in the thick of things. He thinks that if he works with his team, they can turn the kill around. But look at the damage back. Jackie's then forced to retreat. A really nice play from Jackie's. But the CC from Trimby is just far too much. And it ends up being a clean sweep. Only Patrick, the one to get away with his life. More sure, but barrier there, not enough to save Jackie's life. You can see what can work for Giant X. They're just too much crowd control, and team fights play too well by Heretics right now. 13 kills to six, 6,000 now their gold lead. They get their second dragon of the game, and Giant X have been found wanting so far. They have this all in composition, but Heretics are doing a very good job of making sure. None of them get out of the fight. So now we turn our attention back towards the Baron. Heretics should know how much stronger they are, and I feel like that they'd be fine forcing this objective. Continuing to play it safe for now as the vision control beginning to come through once again from Heretics. I wonder if Survivor goes down towards the bottom side. There's a wave pushing in there. He does have the TP, but the collapse begins. Ignite able to escape from the clutches of the dredge line. Yankos dashing in, Wonder on the front line as well. Patrick on the wrong side of the Weaver's wall. But he's able to walk his way back to the safety of his team. Jackie's goes in, looks for a bit of chip damage. Pops his soul back in his body with the soul unbound, and it's fine for the moment. Tono's still on the flank. He's been really good at finding these angles, but unfortunately can't really convert it into much. He's not using the hex slash there. Oh, onto Ignar, double stun going in. Seismic Shove takes him back. He's down to half HP. Face call pulls him out. But Heretics haven't taken any damage yet. Ignar already down to a sliver of HP. Will heal up with the Warmogs. The Antonio still looking for that flank. Heretics get the push in mid, but not much more. Ignar almost back to full HP already. That's the power of the Warmogs on support, but. Still had to burn that Fates Call. Pathmaker in by Wonder, pulls him out with the All Out. Juhan jumps away with the Arctic Assault. The Antonio still looking for that flank position. Ignar Hex flashes away. Wonder dashing forward. Juhan now stepping in as well. Jackie's trying to get the wave alongside the Antonio. 
Giant X a little bit split here. Heretic's a bit closer together. Jackie's dash is back. Seismic Shove just dodged away. And the elastic slingshot there. The Antonio surviving. What could have been his demise. A lot of dancing back and forth, but nothing really being gained. Ignat very close to losing his life, but is able to get away to safety as the resets now come through from Heretics. They want to replenish some of those wards, finish up some items they have sitting in their back pocket. But uh, <laughs> I'm surprised. It's, it's a very awkward game, Medic, I'll be honest. Is it feels like Giants just can't win a fight, mm -hmm. <laughs> but Heretics also aren't forcing the fights. So like, it, they're just kind of awkwardly looking at each other, trying to find these picks. And Heretics is quite happy to let Giant X be the aggressors, be the ones to engage on them, kind of put that pressure onto Giant X. But that means that from them, it's just kind of a slow and steady game. You know, they're not trying to overforce anything. They're just trying to pick up farm where they can. They're really trying to take their time. Bear in mind, like, Nothing's really happened since the last dragon was taken <laughs> three and a half minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's likely going to be setting up for the next dragon as well. You remember when the EU LCS went to London? Yeah. And that guy in the crowd shouted that thing. <laughs> that's all that's playing through my mind right now. <laughs> it's Heretics. Start up the Baron. John is here. A possibility here of go. a steal. It's down to 8,000. Here we go, says Vetti. TP in by Jackies. And here we don't go anymore, <laughs> Vettius. Yeah. We've gotten. They've retreated. Well, they got the TP. Advantage gained. Nice. Problem is that bot wave has been completely pushed in. Um, so, I mean, a lot of farm is being lost right now for Heretics. Mm -hmm. Cool. Debating right now whether or not to go back to base to go and catch it. Vision being cleared out once again. The pattern repeats 40 seconds until the dragon, which means the Baron will now be abandoned. We'll move up back, attention back towards bot side. Wonder should likely go and catch that wave. And no? the Antonio still has TP, so he'll put he'll position on the top side of the map, can TP into a fight if it does begin. Heretics advancing their vision line successfully here as Giant X were all on a reset. Now they might just do the exchange. They might just say, hey, you guys can position around the Drake. We're just going to go for the Baron. And that's exactly where they're parting right now. Wonder takes a little bit of damage, but not too much to well, be worried about for him. the problem is they can't because Flacker can just do the Dragon solo. Yeah. They could also have Spyro do the Dragon solo and then use his ultimate to get into the fight. I'm going to be honest, Betty. If I'm Giant X, I'll take a possible 4v5 fight over what's been happening the true. last few moments, that's you know? That's true. But uh, you can see how, how suffocated Giant X feel right now. Heretics just like, think you can off. stop what we do? I doubt okay, it. Okay, they're starting it. Here we go. Giant X looking for their spark here. Have they found it? Wonder, Trimby, and Yankos stepping in. The Weaver's Wall, the possibilities from Zorago as well. Jackie's on the backside of the pit, not there yet. Weaver's Wall going in. Flackhead on his way, stun on Wonder, not too much. 8,000 on the Baron. Hook wide there by Trimby. The Antonio looking for a flank position, but he's going to be spotted by that ward. Looks like it can't Look find him. Magnus Storm from Ignar as Wonder and Yankos are locked up. Crescent Guard coming out as well. Wonder doing so much work on the backline here, and Patrick just can't get through him. The face call will stop him in his tracks, but Zviru will put him in the dirt and Giant X. They were absolutely bounced around by Heretics. The Baron secured. Juhan dives in, but dies immediately, and Heretics have true control of this game. A calm, calculated approach from Heretics. But Wonder making it impossible for Patrick to play, single-handedly eliminating the AD carry threat from the fight. The initiations always look so promising for Giant X, but then they just don't have the damage to convert it into a winning fight. Now the Baron secured, Heretics can look to end this game. It's definitely be a Cassanti Yay performance by Wonder. <laughs> 2 really? 0 Kassanti 11. Yay. Kassanti That's what you're going to go well, with. The opposite is Cassant Nay, which I also like, so. <laughs> We're gonna have to workshop that, Minik. I can't believe you spent this much time and that's the best you've come Years up with. Years I've been thinking of that one. Uh, Wonder tanking the tower here. Wonder Doesn't making fun matter. of the oh, tower. The Antobra's not back as well. The Antonio has to dash away. Fate sealed out by Jackies. And I think that spells the end of the game for him as well. Forced away, there's Mites, there's Super Minions. or well, not Super Minions, Baron Empowered Minions, and possibly Super Minions soon as well. Zviro has TP, TP behind. Will it be answered? TP to the midline by Zviro. The engage coming in from Wonder is already. Juhan's been stunned up, locked up, and taken out by Team Heretics. The Antonio dashes in, but flashes out as soon as he's realized what he's got himself into. Cell Division will come out, but he can't evolve away out of that situation. Patrick does no damage. Heretics really don't give a damn about him at all as Jankos dives in, and Patrick will escape to the safety of the fountain.
That cannot be said for Jackie's Juhan and the Antonio. The Nexus in their eyes, Team Heretics. It was slow, it was steady, but they secure their first win of summer. I mean, Heretics just played a very controlled game where they just allowed Giant X to be the aggressors from start to finish. Constantly punishing on their engages, turning fights in their favor, and a solid start to the regular season. It's a long one, 38 minutes, 46 seconds, but it's a, it's a secured one for Heretics. You go for one of them in your key player of the game at MC on X, Wonder, Spyro, or Flacket are your options. I know people don't like voting for Cassante, but Wonder <laughs> actually did a lot of work in team fights. Like great, really great. Really zero Antonio's team engages. scoreline, yeah. involved in 16 of the team's 18 kills. Uh, very impactful game from, I mean, from each individual, really. Yeah. It was, that was good team performance. As you say, their team fighting very solid as well, which is always a sign to be delighted with if you're a Heretics fan. We're going to go do a short break, but we'll be right back after that. Red Bull gives you wings.